London. Uh, I know it's been a while. I was a tad busy. I don't really have a very good excuse, but basically I had two jobs at one point, so I was just too beat to write reviews. And then after that, I went on vacation with my family. But fortunately, in this month-long span since I've been gone, I've had a lot of time to read. This is actually going to be a bulk review. I'm just going to kind of quickly go through five books that I have read so far this summer that I really enjoy and just kind of want to throw out there. Also, I've noticed that I have 20 odd subscribers up there and that's very surprising for me. I don't know why, why you guys decided to do that, but thank you. It's not going to get any better, so, but... I'm glad you're here. It's fun because I, otherwise I would just be talking to myself. And I don't have friends who want to hear me talk about my books, so I have to just throw it out on the internet. Great. Okay, book number one. The first book I want to review, I have actually read three times and had never finished before now. Uh, the reason being, I had a friend when I was in eighth grade who read this book, loved it, and told me how it ended. And that ending was so shocking on my psyche that I just was like, I gotta read this book. But then as I got closer to the ending, I was like, I'm not ready for it to be over. And I know that this is a series book, but at the same time, I was like, so invested in this story. I finally finished it. Uh, this book is called Odd Thomas, and it's by, don't judge, Dean Koontz. As far as um, books are concerned, I really just love this one. I'm a firm believer in brain candy, and while Odd Thomas doesn't quite fit into the Twilight, you don't have to think at all standing, it is something that you can probably read really fast and get through really fast and by the end just be like, oh, which is how I felt. Basically, uh, this is the story about a guy named Odd Thomas who lives in the small town of Pico Mundo and he can see ghosts. We're off to a excellent start. Ghosts also are aware of him and he just kind of interacts with them and has kind of just comfortably set up his life. He's got a girlfriend, he's got a job he's happy with, he just kind of goes on. And then some unsettling things happen that are going down that only he can really be aware of, so he decides to step up. Along with being able to see ghosts, Odd is also capable of seeing things called Bodox. They follow people or they lurk around areas where bad things are gonna happen. Much of the plot has to do with the fact that early on, while Odd is working at the Pico Mundo Grill, a man walks in that he doesn't know and that man is being followed by 15 Bodox or something like that and the number keeps growing. So basically Odd has to figure out what this guy is doing and what's happening and sort of the mystery and try and stop a terrible event before it actually happens. This book is so good. I guarantee if you read the first chapter, you'll be like, what? And you'll be hooked. Um, if you don't like the first chapter, you probably won't like the rest of the book. That being said, this book is definitely not for everyone. It is gruesome in some parts and I'd have to say the first chapter is probably the most unsettling so you can be comforted in knowing that you're not getting into a book and then halfway through having a bunch of blood and gore and madness thrown upon you that you weren't expecting. So Odd Thomas is really funny, he's got a great sense of humor, he is the narrator of the book so you really feel like you get to know him throughout the story and by the end I felt like he was my best friend and I wanted to just hug him and be like you did good, buddy. You're just, I'm so proud of you. But I feel that way a lot about a lot of book characters. So, Odd Thomas, one of my favorite books. Finally finished it. I would give it four out of five ghosts. I don't know. Speaking of ghosts, segue. I am on the internet a lot, and on the internet, I see, oh, I see a lot of books by an author named Neil Gaiman, and I know he's really popular, so what? But I've never read anything by him. And you know when those authors, there are authors that are so popular, and they've got so many books out there, and there's so many different kinds, and they write children books, and adult books, and fantasy books, and short stories, and you're like, I don't know where to start. I did my research, and since I have a, not morbid side of me, but I have a side of me that loves things like ghosts and mysteries and that sort of thing, I picked up his book the Graveyard Book. Loved it. I read this book within like two days. Uh, I also read it without knowing that it was an adaptation of The Jungle Book because I'm actually not very familiar with that story, but it is. This book is about a boy named Bod who is raised in a graveyard by ghosts, similar to The Jungle Book in which, you know, 
boys raised by the jungle. Yeah, whoa. This book is really well paced. Every chapter kind of goes through a important period in Bod's life. Basically, events that happened in the beginning of the book still affect what happened to Bod later in his life. And you sort of see him grow up in this graveyard and you see him deal with different circumstances. I am a big fan of adaptations that are done well, and although I'm not very familiar with the Jungle Book other than the Disney movie version, it's on my list, I would say that this is an excellent adaptation. And I loved the pacing, I loved the story, I loved the characters. It was wonderful. It is sort of categorized as a children's book, but I think it's for everyone. I think I would have liked this probably when I was between the ages of 10 and 12, but I'm 22 now, so, and I still enjoy it. So, I actually am going to give this book five out of five tombstones because I enjoyed it so much and I felt like it was really well written. Book number three is called Possession and it's by A.S. Byatt. And this book has been out for quite some time. Um, I think it was released in the late 90s. My copy is very used. This book is actually about a researcher named Roland who, while he's doing research on a poet by the name of Ash, he discovers some secret letters that no one else has seen before from the, from the poet to a mysterious woman. Those letters are sort of the jumping point for Roland to seek out this mystery about this poet that he thought he knew everything about. And through that, he meets, meets another researcher named Maud Bailey, and together they sort of go on this journey trying to figure out who Ash really was, who this woman was, what their relationship was, and why it's important to their scho scholarly world. Gosh. This book is really interesting because it incorporates a lot of different mediums. So you get poems, you get letters, you get narration, and it all comes together, and it's pretty interesting that way. I enjoyed the first half of the book probably more than I enjoyed the second half of the book. It felt like it was drawn out a bit much. It's very well written. Um, I do think that there was a lot of time and effort put into this book, but at the same time I think it sort of oversteps its bounds and becomes a bit too much at some points. I think everyone could pull something different from this book. I don't want to give away too much because it's about so many things. Mostly it is called about possession though, and you think about possessing people, and what it means to possess people, what it means to possess yourself, and who you are in the world that you live in, which in this case would be the academic world of Britain. And it is a love story. It's not quite the kind of love story we think of nowadays. It's more focused on being a romance. This book is called Possession, a romance. So if you appreciate the understanding of romance, what romance was in literature, I do think this book successfully incorporates the key elements of what romance used to be. And I do think it's worth reading for that. It's kind of a nice modern take on the romance genre. Boom! I had a friend recommend this book to me. It's called Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell. I really liked it. It's definitely a teenager book. It's not something you would ever read probably in academic circles. That being said, I love teenager books. I haven't really let go of that side of myself that still loves books like The Princess Diaries. I just, I really liked this book. It definitely, I was gripped to it through the whole time. It's basically about two characters. No surprise, their names are Eleanor and Park. They basically look like this. Look at that, lovely. Eleanor moves into town, her family's kind of from the lower end, and they basically bond over their mutual interests. Eleanor doesn't really have any friends and Park doesn't really like the friends he has. So in that bonding, a romance obviously develops, but then there's complications. Surprise! Um, but this is a really heartfelt story and I think that there are a lot of teenagers especially out there that would kind of relate to a lot of the themes in this book. Um, there are a few heavy things, especially towards the end. So I wouldn't recommend this for anyone under 14. Maybe even older, 15, 16. It kind of just depends on what you're comfortable reading and your reading style. It's just something you have to gauge on what you're comfortable with. Mm. The book is split up between Eleanor's opinions and Park's opinions, sort of like their thoughts going through on how they interact with each other and their lives and what they think of each other. It's sort of a wonderful, whimsical look into the teenager's mind and first love and um, what it means to care about someone and love someone. So. I think that this book is worth a read. 
I'm sure glad I own it and I would recommend it to a lot of people out there. Am I just making a fool of myself the whole time? I could be. I don't know. I don't ever know. I don't know what I'm doing. The last book, number five, was kind of a surprise buy for me. It's We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. A lot of people probably know who Shirley Jackson is based on her short story, The Lottery, which I do think is required reading in a lot of high schools. The Lottery is a very interesting short story, and I actually think it would be um, valuable to read it before you read books like her We Have Always Lived in the Castle. Um, we Have Always Lived in the Castle is narrated by the protagonist, Margaret Blackwood, um, otherwise known as Mary Cat. It starts out with her sort of going through why it's a problem for her to go into the village, and the villagers hate her, they're mean to her, and she is quirky and just kind of has to deal with it and tries to stand up to them in her own little ways. She lives in the old Blackwood house with her older sister Constance and her uncle Julian. Julian and Constance don't leave Blackwood. Um, they stay there and the only one who ever leaves is Mary Cat. You find out very early on that uh, Constance was acquitted for the murder of the Blackwood family and as a result they have been ostracized from the village. As the story progresses, things kind of begin to unravel and um, there is a catalyst that sort of upsets the balance of the home. The book deals a lot with what the nature of evil is and what it means to be an individual thinker and someone who's a part of the mob mentality. And I think that by the time it was done, I felt like I felt a little different after I'd read it. I think that it is a valuable read. It's certainly an enjoyable read. Mary Cat is a very good narrator, and she is even funny at some points. It's interesting the way Shirley Jackson writes the book. Although it's quick, you feel very part, much a part of the Blackwood Manor and the part of the lives of the characters. It's a satisfactory ending, and I think that it will cause a lot of people to think and maybe even reread the book for the meaning. So I highly recommend We Have Always Lived in the Castle. It is very dark. It's sort of like, it's a little Adam's Family, a little Lemony Snicket, but a lot darker than that. And it kind of embraces that darkness. Um, and it's really just about the darkness inside of people and how that manifests. So those are the five books that I have been reading over the past month that I have thoroughly enjoyed. Um, hopefully that I can get back into the groove of doing book reviews. I have been trying to focus on books that I really enjoy reading and are kind of easy to go through because as the school year starts I will be reading some thicker and heavier things, which I will still review because those are also important for reading. Reading is just so good, so great. Um, I don't have anything else to say. I'm gonna go watch a Korean drama, so yeah, that's, there we go. All right. Uh, happy reading, guys. If you have any recommendations, put it down in the comments section. I love to read those. And thank you again to those people that have subscribed or left really lovely comments. It's just really nice to know there are fellow readers out there who feel the same way about their books. Huzzah! All right. Bye.